There's so many things that can come into play individually and collectively for each generation and including our own. And then on top of that, you throw in just the natural flaws of human beings. It's just impossible for us not to feel let down in one way or another at one point or another from our parents. Today, I am sipping on a nice coffee. Let me know what you're drinking. If you are drinking something down below, hope you're tuning in from a nice cozy spot. I am gonna give some prompts today if anybody does want to use or pull these questions as journal prompts or something to self-reflect on if you have like a moment of meditation or mindfulness, anything of, the, of that nature, these prompts would go in really well, especially if you are super intrigued by or find any point of this conversation that you connect with, or in general, if you just wanna forgive your parents or get into a place where you can start to maybe heal anything that your parents maybe left behind within you or that you experienced with them growing up, anything of that nature, then you can totally do that. If you're listening today or if you're watching today, you can also pause the video or pause the chat and do the prompts in real time as well. That's what I'm gonna do as I'm talking, although I'm not gonna include it. However, if you are a member of the Kaelin's Coffee Talk and Flows channel, then I'm going to structure this coffee talk with the pauses to write if you would like to actually use this as an interactive journal journal session. So feel free to come, come join, it's a cool club. I do my best not to buy into fast fashion anymore, which can be really hard because it's expensive. So if you want to bypass the fast fashion haul and spend your money wisely on more high quality essentials and clothing items and products that will fit great in your wardrobe, but also make you feel great and fit your style as well, then you'll want to check out Quince. Right now, go to quince.com slash talk to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash T-A-L-K for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash talk. Every one of us through one lens or another, through one perspective or another, have gone through some sense of hardships from our parents. So that's definitely going to be part of the conversation. It's also going to be about growth. It's going to be about empathy. It's going to be about better understanding what, I mean, parents really are, which is just fellow human beings, no different than you and I. And then also forgiveness and overcoming very human mistakes, being that our parents are human. So my first question for you is, what was your perception of either or both of your parents or caregivers as you were growing up? A lot of the times growing up, we see our parents as infallible like they can't fail like especially in our earliest years and our youngest years when we really start to have conscious thought we tend to look at the people guiding us in our lives as these larger than life beings right and that makes a lot of sense when you're a baby and you're just developing your understanding of the world the people that you spend the most time with the people that are meant to be guiding you loving you unconditionally and taking care of you while also nurturing you and showing you how to grow and showing you how to really look at the world in a lot of ways our parents were our first introduction of the ways that we could see the world. When something would happen and you're a little baby, and I know this firsthand now being a mom myself, the little baby looks to the parent before they react and they're trying to gauge, okay, how am I supposed to feel about this? And through repetition, they learn how to feel and then it moves on to the next developmental stage. And so like when you fell or when you saw something, or I mean, we obviously have our initial reaction to things. It's not all of the time that we look to our parents, but for the most part, things that we didn't understand, we tend to look at our parents and think or notice or see or wait for that connection. And then that communication, that understanding of like, how am I supposed to feel about this? How do you feel about this? Teach me, what is this? I definitely had two very, very interesting parents and role models growing up. For my dad, I always saw my dad as Superman. My dad was always so funny, never afraid to be goofy, never afraid to go to any lengths to make us laugh. He was also so cool. He still is so cool. He does the coolest things. He has cool hobbies and he never stopped doing the things that he loved. I always saw my mom or felt a disconnection with my mom. So to me, she always seemed very reserved, very stressed and very lost almost in her own stress and her own high anxiety, if you will. However, at the same time, I always thought my mom was beautiful. I always knew that she was incredibly intelligent and very, very talented. Like 
My mom makes the most amazing food. I will never turn down a home cooked meal from my mom. And so those were kind of the larger than life beings, or I guess caricatures that my parents first were to me as a little kid. And this is important because this tends to be the part where we gain our disappointment from. It's not necessarily that our parents are human that make us disappointed because on a very logical level, we do know that, we do understand that. In a lot of ways, it's got a lot less to do with our parents and a lot more to do with us because it's our own feelings of being let down or being disappointed when our parents stop being the larger than life people they were in those early, early years. And that's just something that regardless of who you are, regardless of who took care of you, regardless of who raised you, whether your parents were in your life or not, it'll still apply to your parents, but also to whoever did raise you. Like there will come a point where you realize that there is no possible way to live up to the standard that a baby slash toddler slash little kid has for the person guiding them through life. And that actually really goes for anything, any kind of mentor, any kind of guide. People will always be human. Humans are flawed. Humans will always let you down. And that's not to be pessimistic. That's more so to be empathetic and realistic that I know I'm gonna let my son down in one way or another. No matter how hard a person tries to be the perfect parent, to be the perfect friend, to be the perfect sister, to be the perfect anything, we are flawed and we're meant to be flawed. And those flaws will arise in our connections in one way or another. And it's not necessarily that you want to go throughout your whole life having relationships that don't have conflict or that don't let you down. It sucks when it's our parents because, I mean, our parents took on the responsibility by birthing us to love us, to take care of us, to guide us, to show us the world. But people can only do that as far as they've been able to do that themselves. And... As far as your parents or your caregivers were able to do that themselves comes directly from how well their parents were able to do that for them. And then when we really start to bring into context what was going on in each generation that raised the generation below it, that then raised us, that we're now raising the next one, there are always going to be outside factors that come into play, whether it's societal norms or like pressures. There's so many things that can come into play individually and collectively for each generation and including our own. And then on top of that, you throw in just the natural flaws of human beings. There is just, it's just impossible for us not to feel let down in one way or another at one point or another from our parents. The really cool thing though about human existence and just like our experience on this planet being the children of whoever our parents are is that they can still be or your caretakers could still be the people that you wrote down or that you thought of when I asked who were what were your first perceptions of your parents like they can still be those things because that's the crazy multifaceted super complicated layered version and multi-dimensional version of existence however it just means that as you got older, they stopped being so one dimensional and you started to understand and see and interact with the other dimensions of your parents as you also became more dimensional as a human being yourself. And that's where we start to create these conflicts. That's where we start to have these moments where our parents can sometimes let us down. I recently shared a vlog cleaning out my closet for the summer, but also just since my body has changed and my style has changed and my preferences have changed. I do my best not to buy into fast fashion anymore, which can be really hard because it's expensive. So if you want to bypass the fast fashion haul and spend your money wisely on more high quality essentials and clothing items and products that will fit great in your wardrobe, but also make you feel great and fit your style as well, then you'll want to check out Quince. It's actually through my podcast that I heard about Quince and it's become my spot for quiet luxury without having to pay luxury prices. Quince offers a range of must-have items, things like 100% European linen. They have luxurious mulberry skirts. They have 14 karat gold jewelry from just $30. All of their prices are 50 to 80% less than similar brands. And because Quince creates timeless classic styles that won't go out of fashion, you'll have them in your closet forever. The best part for me is that I don't get that guilt from paying for something that I know is made from poor quality 
materials and then also that I know isn't going to last me very long. And if you're wondering how they do it, Quince partners directly with top factories to cut out the cost of the middleman and pass the savings on to you. And what's even better is Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium eco-friendly fabrics and finishes. So I can feel good about getting high quality items that last longer and so can you. So if you're looking to upgrade your closet this summer, then do it with Quince. Right now, go to quince.com slash talk to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash T-A-L-K for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com. I'm going to start painting my nails red. My son actually picked my nail polish color out today. So my next question, if you were across from me right now, what was the first instance where you ever felt disappointed or felt hurt by your own parents? Write it down or just recall it in your mind because it's going to be important. So the thing that's super interesting with sharing my own perspective in today's chat is that I have the ability to give you, from my own point of view, a healthy example and an unhealthy example. For instance, when I think back to the first time where I felt hurt or disappointed in my parents, it's interesting for me to look at it through the lens of my unhealthy parent because I realize it actually goes a lot further back than I really noticed because you don't know until you know. Meaning that I didn't realize what I was missing out on from that specific relationship in my life until I really got to an age where I could look in hindsight and realize all the ways that I was actually let down without even knowing it yet. When it comes to my healthy parent, when I think back to the first time that I ever felt hurt or let down by them, that was a very abrupt, specific moment for me. The reason why starting here is important is because this usually tends to be the initial break or the initial tear in a connection. Again, this doesn't matter what relationship you're talking about. However, today we're talking about the parent-child dynamic. So when you first feel hurt or let down by somebody, that is where the wound opens. And then each mistake or each circumstance or situation after that, that hurts you or lets you down by that person is almost like salt in the wound or further hurting or opening that wound. And so starting here is a really good way to begin with the healing process. And forgiveness is an interesting concept because again, it's so hard. I don't know everybody's situation listening today, but again, from my own perspective, I have two situations. I have a healthy parent and an unhealthy parent or an unhealthy connection. When I think about the healthy parent, going through the stages of forgiveness with that parent, which I did years ago, even though I did want to forgive that parent for the sake of our connection, I also wanted to forgive that parent for my own sake. And it actually didn't even happen initially when I thought it did. It took years of, of therapy for both of my parents for me to really heal and let go of the things I felt I collected in my own hurt. But you don't forgive your parents or you really don't forgive anybody solely for that other person. In a lot of ways you forgive for yourself. And it's not to say that what someone did was okay. It's not to say that it didn't hurt you or that you're over it or you're never gonna feel hurt by it again. It's more so just to say like, I'm going to forgive you so that I don't continue to carry this forward. I'm going to forgive you so that I can move on with what's left within me from that hurt or that pain and grow through it, go through it, get on the other side, learn from it and move on so that it, this doesn't become a block in my life. The idea of parentification is where you become the parent of your own parent. I have experienced this in my life and it's a difficult thing to go through because you then become the role model in that moment or you become the person that takes on the responsibility of doing the right thing and teaching the person that is doing the wrong thing. And you have no choice but to figure it out for yourself as a kid, that steals away not only your own guidance, not only your own ability to stay the age you are, but it also creates a very imbalanced power dynamic with a parent where you then feel responsible for that parent or you're then learning so that you can teach the parent what they should have already learned in a hopefully taught you. Again, circumstances don't always allow this to happen. I can empathize with the idea that parents can have their own traumas and parents can grow up with their own wounds. And if they don't heal those wounds, if they don't heal those traumas, especially because psychology and going to therapy and a lot of these things, mental health at large has become a much more open conversation than it ever used to be. 
However, two truths can be true. It still doesn't negate the fact that if you ever had to parent your own parent, then that is wickedly unfair to you. And there's, again, still room for forgiveness here and not for the sake of the other parent, especially if you're still having to parent that parent today. At this point, in my opinion, there is really no excuse with mental health being the conversation that it is today, with resources, yes, sometimes still being very difficult, but I mean, at the same time, it's not fair. There's no right way to put this, okay? I'm not saying that this is the ideal way to gain these types of skills or values in your life. However, through my own version of having to be the parent of my own parent, I know that I did mature very quickly. I know that I did gain a lot of wisdom a lot earlier on in my life. And I have a better understanding of people that I don't understand, which sounds weird, but it's just more so like, when I cannot rationalize decisions that other people make, I'm not quick to write them off. Instead, I'm able, and this kind of leads back to the empathy, I'm able to then hold space for like, I wonder what happened to that person that makes them think that way, behave that way, or choose that way. When you get through the other side of the hardships and the trauma, you will have gained something from that experience. And if you would like a journal prompt for this, if you did have to parent your own parent or parent yourself because your parent wasn't there to guide you, then I would be curious to know if you feel like you learned something from that. And if you have never thought of it that way before, then really sit and be honest with yourself. Put the pain aside, put the, put the feelings of unjust aside for a second and really ask yourself through that experience, how did that evolve or how did that become part of who you are today? In a good way. Who were your parents growing up? Like how much do you know about your parents' childhood experiences? Yes, that is a prompt. So if you are pausing and writing, feel free to do so now. It's also a question you can just think about for a second or continue to listen, whatever floats your boat. Our parents at one point were younger. Our parents at one point were the children, were the babies. Our parents, just like any other human being, <laughs> including you and me and every, everybody else on the planet, went through the experience of being raised, went through the experience of being a blank canvas born into the world, not understanding a thing, a crying naked baby into the hands of whoever raised your parents, only to understand the world through their eyes and their experiences and interactions with their close circles and their schoolmates. And they had hopes, they had dreams, they had crushes. They had highs, they had lows, they had crazy teenage years, they had those early 20s realizations, and they probably had a moment, whether they decided to explore it or not, where they themselves realized that their own parents were human, where they felt they needed to have space for forgiveness or trauma or whatever it was through their own experiences growing up from the way they were raised. And there's actually, I mean, probably a good chunk of parents out there or people listening today with parents out there that may not have even gone through that yet and might be realizing it now. Because again, these types of conversations are becoming more norm. So it's even as we as a society get more normalized with talking about these things, all of us are at very different demographics, very different ages, realizing like, oh, wow, yeah, okay, I, I have some shit I could probably go to therapy for. Built up resentment towards this person or that parent or this societal norm, you know? So this is all just to say that if you could separate yourself from your parents from, for just a second, either one or both, forget that you're their child. Go back in time, imagine a time where they didn't have children, you're just like a bystanding floating ghost able to watch your parents in earlier years. Watch the times where they cried because they were heartbroken or someone hurt them or let them down or they experienced trauma or they experienced something horrible or they, did something great. I mean, you can experience all of those things, but it's just to bring humanity back into who your parents are. Because again, too, and this is by no fault of just the, again, human condition that we tend to look at everything from a very self-centered point of view. It takes a lot of mindfulness, a lot of like deep meditation, a lot of really coming out of ourselves to look at the world more vastly. When we look at our parents, we tend to only think of them through our own lens. We don't tend to only think of them as our parents, but separate yourself from that for a second and give your parents back their humanity. This again, isn't to excuse anything that you feel was completely a betrayal or hurtful that your parents did to you growing up. It's just again, more so to better understand the complexity of a human being 
whether or not they're your parent. And if we can give that to other people, and if we can even give it to ourselves, which I hope we can give it to ourselves, especially when we're trying to overcome our own shortcomings, our own mistakes, our own lessons learned, we should be able to give it to our parents too. That said, I do wanna also hold space for the idea that when your parents do have the opportunity to face their own shortcomings, their own mistakes, or their own moments of letdown or whatever it was, if they don't take that opportunity to acknowledge, learn, evolve, grow, and try to do better next time, which is all you can really ask from any human being on the planet, that is where things can get really sticky. That is where things can get really complicated. My healthy parent, 1000%, would do and did do all of the steps that I just explained to you. They made a mistake, they were confronted with that mistake, they held space for how that affected other people, they learned from it, they grew, they do better. Lots of empathy, lots of love, lots of self-reflection, sometimes to a fault. <laughs> and the unhealthy parent will very rarely hold space, at least in my experience, for the mistake that they've made. If they do hold space for the mistake that they made, it's someone else's fault, especially when you are a child and you are trying to understand a parent and they don't even acknowledge your pain, they don't acknowledge your hurt, or they don't own and hold space like, wow, yep, I just made a mistake, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna try better, I'm gonna do better. That can be a really hard thing to forgive. The reason why filling back in the gaps of the experience your parent had as a solo individual, a solo human being, is again, not to excuse the behavior if it is an unhealthy parent. It's more so for you to understand. It's so that you don't feel like that little kid that is so lost, so confused, possibly gaslit, or completely written off, your feelings don't exist, your feelings don't matter, it's going to help you heal because you'll be like, oh, my parent maybe potentially went through this or had that happen or for whatever reason, that is why their brain works this way, their heart is closed off in this way, they can't connect, they can't hold space for their mistakes, it doesn't make it okay, it just allows you as the child better understand it so that it can be more of a healing experience for you. From that point of view, you can set up healthy boundaries. I mean, it can get even more deep and more complex when we really start to think about the ways or the patterns or the habits that we picked up from our parents, because that again, even though we may have picked it up from the people that we were initially guided and led by and birthed by, the minute it becomes your habit, the minute it becomes your pattern, even in general, when you think about generational trauma or you think about the cycle of behaviors and the pattern of behaviors, you don't have to pick this up. Let me start with that disclaimer, but it can and it very much does become your opportunity to break the pattern, to break the cycle, to break the habit, to learn, to grow, to do better. It's just whether or not you wanna take it as an opportunity or look at it through that perspective, which is all within your control. If you're not there yet, if you're not at the point yet where you can hold space for like this hardship is something that I can actually grow through, that's fair, that's a very, very normal place to be in the like cycles of healing. But a lot of the times these situations can and do and likely already have helped you evolve on your own through the world. And even if you haven't realized it yet, you will, especially the further and further out you get into the world, the more you interact with more people, the more you understand the world, the more you'll realize whether it was your parents or it was any other hardship at all, like, wow, that actually equipped me in this way to better take on this reality of life. And it can also be turned into art as well. I mean, whether you put it into a book you write or you turn it into a painting or you turn it into music or you turn it into a dance. I literally started my YouTube channel in my childhood bedroom living in my home with just my mom and my brother. And at that point, I remember thinking like, this is the last place I wanna be. And so I turned that feeling or I used that feeling to pivot my attention and to pivot my focus and my dedication into something that did feel really nice, that did feel really good and that gave me hope and that made me feel like there was something to look forward to or a creative outlet that I had and that was YouTube. It can turn into a lot of different things if you can look at it through that perspective. My last question for you is what do you want given what you've experienced from your parents? That's a loaded question, by the way. And what I mean by it, if you're like, what? <laughs> I mean, given the situation, given the reality of what you know about your parents, what do you want from them? 
And also in a separate, but also the same question, what do you want from the experience that you had with them? Like, do you want a relationship with your parents now today? You would hope, I would hope that the answer is yes. It's not a reality or realistic for a lot of people. And I get that. What do you want from this situation? And what do you want from your parents? So let me tell you why I asked you this question. It is in my belief, the minute you become conscious, the minute that you become aware of what it really is, or at least your farthest understanding of what it can be to exist, to not evolve and grow would be to waste the opportunity of the life that's been given to you. There is not one person on this planet, regardless of the circumstances we think might create the most ideal, perfect situation, there is not one person on this planet that will not go through hardships. When you ask yourself, what do I want from this hardship? What can I gain from this hardship? It's giving yourself the opportunity to overcome, to grow, to evolve into a higher, better version of yourself. Self-improvement can be a toxic thing if it's something we're constantly always trying to do. I do feel like possibly come September when it fits in with the theme of the month, I would love to talk about toxic self-improvement, toxic productivity and all of that. That's not what I'm getting at here. It's not to look at every single situation as something you have to improve upon because that completely overrides the emotions that you probably very well have felt or are feeling from the situation that you've possibly gone through with your parents or just the realization that your parents are human or that they've let you down or the mistakes they made. Hold space for your emotions. Let yourself feel what you feel. Let yourself feel it as many times as you need to feel it. You can go years later and then suddenly feel angry about something again or then suddenly hit something in your own life that makes you like, wow, I don't understand now thinking about it through this perspective, how my parent could have done X, Y, or Z. That is valid. Let yourself feel it. Let yourself have that. That again is part of that human experience that you absolutely deserve to have and absolutely are entitled to feel. But you can grow even as you're feeling all of those things. In fact, it's part of feeling those things that helps you grow. It helps you learn how to deal with feelings of betrayal. You cannot avoid attachment specifically in those first seven years of your life. And so the initial attachments that you had, the initial bonds that you had, were usually from your parents or initial caregivers or whoever raised you. And so when they let you down, you best believe that was very likely the first wound you ever felt that gets reflected in other hardships or gets reflected in other disappointments in your life. It really does come back to that initial bond, that initial attachment in a lot of ways, not all the time, but a lot of the time. And this step is likely a step that all of us take at one point or another, is learning how to forgive our parents, to hold space for their shortcomings, to try to better understand them as just human beings, and then to take what they've given us, whether it was the good or the bad, take responsibility for it in ourselves and the ways that we carry it ourselves, and then use it as an opportunity for us to grow and evolve. And hopefully, hopefully, because it does not matter what age you are on this planet, if you are alive, if you are breathing, if you are here, then there is always opportunity to grow. There is always opportunity to learn. There's always opportunity to evolve as a human being and not in a toxic way, not in the way that means you can never just chill out as a human being, you absolutely can. But when you're confronted with these situations, when you're confronted with hardships, that is where the opportunity for growth comes from. Download the wisdom from it, download the information from it, you can either choose better, do better, or channel it into something. The thing is, whether we like it or not, a life without hardships, a life without any kind of adversity, any kind of letdowns, any kind of heartbreak, any kind of pain is an unseasoned life. It's a life that will put you out into the real world once you do become an adult and you will feel so shattered and broken by the tiniest things because nothing really built your strength growing up. And it is unfortunate. I don't think it should be the way that our, it is that our parents are usually the ones that build us up the most strength to endure pain later on in life. However, for the most part, it's almost, again, part of that human condition, part of reality that there is no possible way that a parent can ever live up to what a child sees them as through the child's eyes. And so no matter what, from small little things to big hardships, our parents were bound to let us down. And if it didn't happen, then we would have went out into the world and trusted every boss, trusted every person that was in a higher power authority to us, regardless or whatever the circumstances were. 
and likely go through life getting taken advantage of or not standing up for ourselves or not being able to process pain or hurt or not knowing how to be in relationship to other people, not knowing how to hold our own healthy relationships, not knowing how to parent as we've stepped into it ourselves or if you decide to step into parenthood yourself. like. It is not just from the good times with our parents that we learn, grow, and evolve, you would hope it would be, but it's just as much from the hard times with our parents too. When you do want the true human experience, when you want to be a strong individual, when you want to be able to go out in the world and feel secure and feel safe within yourself, that can only come from overcoming hard shit. So if you can, for your own sake, try to understand your parent more so that you can too better understand what makes them or what made them the way they are so that you can three forgive their actions not for the sake of saying that it was okay or saying that the way they treat you even still to this day possibly is okay but more so so for you can let yourself off the hook and you can take that energy that pain that pattern that habit that whatever it is and five am i on five i don't know break the cycle break the habit break the pattern evolve grow learn Gain your own sage wisdom, your own advice, your own ability to comprehend the complexity of existing and the complexity of relation to other and connection to other and specifically the connection to our own parents. And six, go out into the world and beam like a bright, shiny light, even one that is flawed itself and makes mistakes itself and can still be angry and feel pain and reverse back into feeling resentment towards their parents, but then go through the whole cycle again. So that's my chat for the day. If you did answer any of the prompts and you do feel comfortable enough to share your experience, you don't have to give a lot of detail, but please feel free to do so because I do think that I can obviously only ever give my perspective and only ever give my point of view, my standpoint of looking at the world, but it's always really cool when other people give theirs as well because Odds are when you do share, when you do talk about your experience, there's someone else reading it that has had something similar happen to them or has had similar experiences and relates to you and your point of view and vice versa. I love the conversations that get started on these talks, regardless of whether or not it's with me or seeing it happen again amongst fellow listeners. And other than that, if you do feel like you got something from today's conversation, I would really appreciate any kind of interaction with today's content because it always helps me fight the algorithm beast. <laughs> if you do think that this could be helpful for other people and you want to get it out there by simply just thumbsing it up, sending a comment of just like a little heart, or if you're listening to the podcast audio version by giving it a rating. Otherwise, I'm wishing you the best and cheersing you the rest of my iced coffee. And I'll talk to you guys all next week. Bye everyone. <laughs>